Welcome to Jesus Christ Prison Ministry. Romans chapter 3 What advantage then is there in being a Jew? Or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, they have been entrusted with the very words of God. Those who claim to be Christians, those who claim to be going to church, those who claim to be baptized, whatever. There is much advantage if, if, they are entrusted with the very words of God. If they are teaching the very words of God. As we have been studying and learning in Romans chapter 2, none of that does any good if we are not listening to or teaching the words of God. What if some did not have faith? Will their lack of faith nullify God's faithfulness? There are people that may be teaching the word of God, going to church, being baptized, that are not living the faithful life. But we don't let that bother us. We don't look to our church. We don't look to man. We are not looking to man-made organizations for our faith. We look to the word of God. God's faith is still there. He is still faithful. Not at all. Let God be true and every man a liar as it is written so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. God is always right. His words, his law is always right, always righteous, always truthful. It is man who doesn't want to keep them. It is man who's not faithful and true to God. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I am using a human argument. Certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as we are being slanderously reported, as saying, and as some claim that we say, let us do evil that good may result. Their condemnation is deserved. Our wicked lives are choices. We make the choice on what we do. But our wickedness or our righteousness will always bring out God's righteousness even more. But it has nothing to do with God because God is love. But the consequences of our wickedness or our righteousness has to do with us. And so we must be very careful that we are obedient to the words of God. What shall we conclude then? Are we any better? Not at all. We have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under sin. Paul here is going to show it doesn't matter what church you belong to. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter if you can quote the Bible or if you go to church on Sunday or on Saturday. It doesn't matter if you've been baptized or speak in tongues. None of us have lived without sin. This is very important to understand. We have all sinned and are all under the condemnation of God. Paul now is going to quote from the Old Testament showing that those who belonged to the church of God, those who thought they were righteous but were living in wickedness, were not righteous. There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. No one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves, their tongues practice deceit, the poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood, ruin and misery mark their ways, and the way of peace they do not know, there is no fear of God before their eyes. This here is talking not about the true Christians. This is talking about those who claim to be Christians, but are not living 
in accordance to God's Ten Commandments. They are people who go to church, sing in the choir, they can read their Bible and quote text, but they have not changed their lives. They are not of God. You see here? Their throats are an open grave, their tongues practice deceit. All of this are people who claim to be God, of God, but are not of God. No one who seeks God. Well, I'm a Christian. I seek God. So this cannot be about me. This is about self-righteous people who have made their church their God, have made their denomination their God, who have made what they believe their God, but they are not following God. This is very important to understand. Paul here is talking with reference to a very specific concept. The Jews who claimed to be of God, but were not living as God commanded them. They were breaking the Ten Commandments while they were rigid in their church going, their ordinances, their forms of worship, but they were not obeying God. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. This is a very important part. The Ten Commandments are simply words. They are the character of God. If we read them, look at them, put them on the wall, they're not going to do us any good. The law just simply points out to us what we must do in order to have eternal life. It is in the keeping of them that we develop the righteous life of God. But the law itself, it can't cleanse us from our past sins, and this is important. People confuse justification from sanctification. The Ten Commandments are used in sanctification. We follow them and practice them to develop righteousness in our lives. But they cannot justify us. They can do nothing about our past sins. That's where Jesus comes in. Jesus had to die to pay for our past sins. Therefore, we do not want to sin anymore. But now a righteousness from God apart from the law. You got this? The law is righteous, but there is another righteousness apart from the law, which is Jesus Christ. And he has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. In other words, the temple services pointed to Jesus. The Lamb being slain was Jesus Christ being slain. The Lamb was innocent. Jesus Christ was innocent. These were shadows and symbols of the Messiah that was to come. But the Jews turned them into life-saving services. They thought they would save them if they killed more lambs and did more sacrificing and went through more ceremonies. But that's not what saves us. Jesus Christ is the only way we can do away with past sins. However, once we have accepted Jesus into our life, now it's our duty and responsibility to learn from him, his words, how to live that perfect, righteous, and holy night. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. We have to believe that Jesus has paid the penalty for our past sins. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. How true that is. We have all sinned. Everybody deserves death. None of us. By working in our church, by rituals, by doing any of church things and ordinances will save us. None of that. We are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him, now listen carefully, as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. 
He did this to demonstrate his justice, because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. That's very important. For 4,000 years of sin, while Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Noah, Abraham were sacrificing the lamb, it did not do away with their sins. In faith, they were looking to the Messiah who would do away with their sins. And they lived in righteousness so that their sins would not continue to pile up and destroy their lives. God came, Jesus Christ himself, and he took all those past sins and he took the penalty for them, death. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. So the Jews thought that they were special. They were only special if they were obedient to the Ten Commandments. They thought they were special because of all the sacrifices. So Paul now is saying, where then is boasting? Just because you're a Jew and have all these sacrifices, there's no boast about it because we're all sinners. We're all under the condemnation of sin. It is excluded. On what principle? On that of observing the law? No, but on that of faith. We must look to Jesus as our sacrifice. None of us can work off our past sins. And that's the important point. None of us, no matter how good we live, can work off our past sins sins. Our past sins can only be paid for through Jesus Christ. And so we look to him, not ourselves, not our church, not our denomination. We look to Jesus and we thank him. We fall on our knees and then we dedicate ourselves to be obedient to his Ten Commandments, to continue to live in righteousness because his atonement he was willing to wipe out all those past sins that we cannot do. But now we have a responsibility to continue living now in that purified state. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Again, keep in mind, justification is not the same as sanctification. They are two different offices. Justification can only come by Christ. Sanctification can only come through the keeping of the Ten Commandments. Is God the God of the Jews only? Is God the God of your church only? Is God the God of Christians only? Is God the God? No, no. Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes. Of Gentiles too. Since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. In other words, the Jews thought that people had to become a part of their church to become saved. You got it? They thought you had to go through all the rituals to become a Jew to be saved. How many churches are the same way? Mormons. Oh, you've got to go through this special secret ceremony to become a Mormon and be saved. Okay, Sabbath-keeping churches. Oh, you've got to go through our special services and so forth to become saved. you got to belong to our church, the Catholics. You must belong to our church. It's the only church for salvation. Jehovah's Witnesses and on and on and on. None of that is true. Jesus Christ died for every single person, no matter what church or denomination they belong to. In fact, you don't have to belong to any church or denomination. All you have to do is have faith in Jesus and his blood to wipe out our past sins. But then we have an obligation. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. How true that is. Everyone, no matter what denomination, 
Paul was saying it didn't matter if you were a Jew, a Gentile. Everyone must uphold the law in their lives once they accept Jesus as their atonement, as their sacrifice. Now, once we have been justified by Jesus and Jesus only, now we are to keep the law to develop sanctification, to be like Jesus, to be holy every day. That is our goal. Thank you for being with me and Jesus Christ, Prison Ministries.